22. Uh, it is actually 6.05 p.m. Um, via remote participation, everyone had uh, requested doing this uh, by remote communication, so we did. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to uh, accept the communication and uh, remote participation. Everybody in favor of this, obviously, we're all here, so okay. Uh, all in favor, aye. Any opposed? Aye. Okay, great. Uh, if everyone has an opportunity to look at the uh, minutes from November 9th meeting, and I'll take a motion to accept or change. So moved. Uh, Mr. Samara, so moved. So I have a second. I'll All second right. it. Mr. Byrne, I believe that was. Yep. All in favor? Minutes the way they are. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed. Okay, great. Moving right along. Uh, let's get right into the presentation. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, folks. Um, let's talk right now. Thank you. And let's take a roll call, which we should have done earlier. Apologize. If the clerk could take a roll call. Uh, Mayor Gold Here. Michael Hall. Uh, Connie Martin. Uh, Dr. Boyd. Richard Underwood. Michael Fiato. Here. Honor Baldwin. Here. Mark Byrne. Here. James Hall. Uh, Mayor Chow. David Peasley. William Samaras. Here. Senator Kennedy. Councilor Leahy. Ronnie Elliott. Here. Dan Manzi. Here. A. Mason. Here. Maria Sheehy. Benjamin O'Para. Erica Harvey. John Haley. Mike Vaughn's here. He texted me. Yeah. Yeah, we only have nine. We have nine. I know we that we have uh, Senator Kennedy will be joining us. He had called in. How many do we need? We need two more. Two more. Okay. We'll make some phone calls. Uh, at the time, if anybody has any issues with this, we're just going to complete. We're going to continue to move forward uh, with the presentation uh, with Skanska. Jim? Good evening, everyone. Um, I hope everyone can see my screen. Um, we'll be proceeding through the presentation. First to present is Rex Radloff from Sophic Construction, Rex, uh, if I can. Thank you, Jim. So, I'm having... oh, thank you, Jim. Oh, You're yeah. welcome. We'll wait for the I'm, next slide. I'm working on that. <laughs> well, I'll just jump right in uh, because phase one, I'm, I'm, sharing, I'm sharing just a couple photos of, um, of some of the progress we've made in the last month uh, of November moving into December. Uh, bottom left, we were able to get the butcher block benches in. This was actually uh, a, a some of our, our last procurement items uh, that we uh, got in uh, this past month. And then the slides on the or the photos on the um, top right and bottom uh, bottom right, uh, we got in uh, striping as well um, in time for the uh, uh, the upcoming season. But our focus is really uh, revolved around uh, punchless status and a couple stats I threw up there: total items created. 1,600, total items closed, about 1,400. Uh, in my experience on this type of job, that's that's a, a pretty excellent punch list uh, um, uh, just to begin with. Uh, you know, a lot of times we, or we can see items or jobs with uh, much more items, but right now 1,600 is, is relatively uh, average, even even low for a job this size. And we're down to our final 10% 10, uh, 10, 10 of items. So about, a, 166 uh, items to close. Uh, for a fair chunk of those still on the outside as we, um, uh, that we'll be addressing, uh, especially when the uh, summers are getting, or when the uh, weather's getting warmer next year. Uh, so that's where phase one is at. As far as phase two goes, uh, <clears throat> we're in the middle of construction, of course, as everyone can see. And I'll start with uh, where we're at for December. Uh, we're completing ground improvements. That's our rammed aggregate piers. I got a couple photos in the next slides. Um, and then we're gonna, going to continue our concrete foundations 
uh, which started towards the end of last month. As far as January goes, we'll begin uh, installing our structural steel. Uh, everyone will still see our first columns being set on 117. That's the date that we're uh, aiming for. And then we'll also complete our concrete foundations. And then February, we'll continue with our structural steel. So it doesn't seem like just by looking at this, there's a ton of activities going on, uh, but that couldn't be further from the truth. It's just, there's a lot of work doing singular activities. That is ground improvements into foundations into steel. Uh, and then steel will bring us through March uh, and then we'll go move into slabs and then building envelope, roof, et cetera. And the building will start to take shape uh, right in time for spring. So moving on, moving on to the next slide. Uh, this photo is uh, just showing uh, wrap installation uh, within the north connector. And this was taken a couple days ago uh, for some of the uh, after hours work that we're doing. Uh, what you see is a, uh, uh, um, a hopper on the left hand side uh, with a, um, a uh, bucket uh, filling it uh, with stone. And that's uh, essentially the operation. Uh, that is going into a hole that was drilled by an auger on the right hand side. And um, we have about um, 1,086 of these, and we're roughly about 80% through right now. So over 800 have been installed. Now this work took place at night because we're take uh, because we're working within what we've established as a buffer zone. Uh, that is an area between the school and the construction activity, or in the limits of work, um, that we feel construction activity is too close to the school, so we do it off hours. And then as far as the depth of the wraps go, uh, we're drilling these about 10 to 24 feet. So moving on to the next slide. Once the, wrap, once the wraps have been installed, we're moving right into foundations. This is the same exact sequence that took place for phase one. And the foundations that you see here down below is our first set of footings. And then up above uh, where you see walls uh, towards the back is our foundation walls. And then of course the, um, the tarps in orange and that unit in red uh, allow us to cover the walls and then also heat the concrete to prevent any freezing uh, from taking place. And this building's taken, uh, this photo is taken uh, from F building, uh, the edge of the freshman academy. And then moving into the next slide, uh, the final major uh, piece of act, um, work that we're putting in place right now uh, are the drilled mini piles uh, for the South Bridge. And right now we're on the uh, 1980 side of the canal. Now this is the work that uh, we have shifted to off hours in its entirety, just because the vicinity of work is just always too close to the school. And then on the right hand side is the actual casings themselves. These are the actual piles that we put into the ground. Now we're drilling down to bed rock, which is about 34 to 40 feet. And we have about 32 of these to put in place. Uh, right after or right before the new year, 1227, we'll be moving across the canal as well. And then a couple, uh, the last two slides I'm sharing, the first one is our wrap as built, just a visual that we actually use on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, what this indicates is the number of wraps that have been installed uh, with regards to the number of wraps to remain. And so the, the count that we have is 828 have been installed so far. Uh, the majority have been installed at the Freshman Academy. Uh, the canopy area, that's the left-hand side, the north connector, and then we're completing our work within D building, which is the back inside of the 1980s building. And then the next slide is just a nice visual of exactly where our work is, and then uh, some of those areas that I just rattled off between F building, the canopy, north connector, D building, and south bridge. Um, it's a nice visual here. And so uh, right now, we're, we're working throughout all areas. Um, foundations are within F building. Uh, wraps are being installed within D building. And then the South Bridge, we're installing the um, mini piles right now. And again, this work will take place um, concluding with steel all the way through March and April. So that's our construction update. Now I'd like to also give a uh, update as far as our MBE and WBE and workforce progress. So our, our total work hours and total workers have increased among all categories. However, our percentages have remained the same. I'm not discouraged by that. Uh, however, we are, uh, can, we are not going down by any means. So as far as total uh, female workforce, 56 workers or 6,800 hours, that has increased from last week or last month, 3.6% uh, of all workers. And then total minority 
uh, workforce is 23%, uh, 365 workers, and then 4,800 hours. And then lastly, our Lowell residents, 80 workers in 20,000 hours uh, at 10%. So with that, that's our construction update. I'd like to turn it over to Parkin Seisman for a design designer update. Uh, Jim, uh, the, we are not having a design update. We don't have anything to report on, but both Robin and myself are here for any questions, uh, either now or in the future. Thank you, Joe. I'll proceed into the budget. Uh, our, our budget is uh, $381.9 million. And as uh, I say in every meeting, that number is going to stay where it is as we, if we, we have change orders, which uh, we have had and will continue to have the construction contingency number of $20.4 million, what's it, $20.4 million, tw started at 21.2. Uh, will, that will decrease as the CM construction budget increases uh, with, uh, with the change orders. But a change order does not increase uh, the bottom, literally the bottom line, $381.9 million. Uh, to date, we have spent $102.4 uh, million, and we have received $68.9 million um, from the MSBA. There is, uh, and that that trails about um, a month and a half, two months behind with processing with the MSBA. Um, and currently, there is a $6 million request uh, being processed that Connor should see those funds um, soon. Uh, moving on to the overall budget um, for this month. Uh, this month, $2.3 million uh, was invoiced to the city. That went out this afternoon. And again, we have spent $102.4 million. Um, and that is the extent of the budget. And I believe we proceed on to questions at this point. Thank you, Jim. Uh, Senator Kennedy, are you... Uh... Are you there? Yes. Uh, go, go right ahead, Senator. Yeah, I, um, I guess this question would be for Suffolk. I've got uh, a constituent called me during the week about the upcoming basketball tournament that will take place over the holidays at Lowell High School. And I guess um, the way that the, uh, that the basketball court is striped now, it's striped with, a, let's say, in a north-south direction. But uh, during the tournament, um, they'll want to play multiple games at the same time. And so they would be going to, instead of having one court that would be on a north-south, in a north-south direction, they would have three courts, I think, that would go east-west, if you will. And, um, and so for two of those courts, they're not, um, they're not striped or marked as they are. And so it, they're gonna have to, it's going to have to be done with tape, which um, given that the tournament is going to provide um, the high school in the city with probably the first opportunity to show off the new gym. Um, it's, it, it just would be better if we didn't have to rely on uh, duct tape for some of the mockings. And so I, I wonder if that was a mistake or whether there's something that can be done to rectify that. And I guess it's, um, I guess this is an issue that probably Suffolk should take up with the athletic director. Um, but is there anything that we can do about that? Jim? Oh, Senator. Oh, sorry. No, go on, Jim. Uh, Senator, Rex. To, yeah, uh, Jim to Rex or Jim. Get the ball here. Rex, Rex I can uh, I can take the basketball here. The um, <laughs> Senator, if you see the um, the pictures uh, in front, yes. what um, it's it's a very busy floor, and what happened this fall was with the delayed delivery uh, of the bleachers. Um, Suffolk was not able to install the all the painted lines this summer as they wanted to until the bleachers uh, were installed. Uh, we've been working daily uh, with Dave Lazinski as to how to uh, accommodate this situation. Um, what they did was in November, they painted the track lines, which you can see in the top right and bottom right hand corners, uh, as that is a varsity sport. The um, cross court basketball, um, given that it's not a varsity sport, 
um, that was taped, not painted, because there wasn't enough time with the curing time to get everything in, we opted for the, the track. Um, but if you look in the bottom right-hand corner, uh, the three-point line and the lines, that is the tape product. Um, okay. So it's it's a professional taping. Um, they I also spoke with, um, we've been speaking almost every day on this uh, issue and some other things in the gym, but they Suffolk ha already has professional tapers lined up to redo the tape again prior to that tournament. Okay. And going forward uh, beyond the tournament and in, in, in uh, the years ahead, are uh, they always going to have to rely on tape for those additional courts? Or is that... No, th this summer when they have proper curing time, um, we have the gym shut down for over a month uh, to finish uh, all the lines that are currently tape um, and other items that need curing time and time without the gym occupied are going to be done this summer. Okay. All right, so this is just a temporary situation this one time just because the bleaches didn't come in on time? Is that exactly. exactly. Okay, because I've, I've been in other gyms and seen courts where the courts going in the other direction would be, they would use uh, markings that would be a different color so that there wouldn't be confusion over whether over the boundary lines and so forth. But They have done that also. The uh, Perkins Eastman um, has worked very closely with Dave Lazinski, the athletic director, and Suffolk on all of the striping of the gym. We've, we've spent hours on the floor going through everything with Dave as to how they want it because it's a very busy gym. You have, you have volleyball, you have track, you have um, basketball. So there's four basketball courts cross court. Those are overlaid with four volleyball courts cross court. And uh, it, the, it is a very busy floor with lines, and uh, we put put a lot of thought into what is the best way to uh, lay that out and in what color situation, with a lot of input from the athletic director. Okay, thank you. All set, Senator. Thanks, Jim. Yep, I'm all set, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Uh, Jay Mason. Uh, on mute, thanks. Jay. Thanks, Mr. Manager. I'm I'm doing really well. Thanks. I've got a. A question, it's maybe a small point, but I think it's worthy to put it on the table. I was at, I think it was at city council last night. I saw an elevation uh, image of the high school and you could see the high school sign. It looked great. And then up on the roof, there was a number of uh, miscellaneous mechanical uh, equipment um, uh, devices, RTUs and fans and so forth. And I wonder if, and this is a question for maybe Robin or somebody at, at Perkins Eastman, is there going to be or, or has there been studies to organize the uh, roof equipment so that, you know, we get a good visual, we want the school to look and, 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 and project an image that's, that's professional and, and, you know, worthy of, of, of the money that we're investing here. Um, can you speak at all to organization of, of uh, rooftop equipment? Uh, Jay, I would be happy to. So at the gym, the equipment that's there is permanent equipment. Um, at the high roof, the organization was focused on um, keeping everything to the east uh, and as compact as possible to provide the high roof as much potential solar panel opportunities. And that also, since our equipment was all at that end, it reduces the distribution um, requirements. So that it, most of it is on the east end. The, the view that you would see from the street at Arcan, you do see um, some limited equipment on the lower roof, because again, the equipment is below it, and we wanted to limit uh, distribution lengths. And there's no uh, solar plan for the lower roof, just because it's limited size. Th thanks, Robin. As you know, I'm I'm all for making room for solar, so I, I absolutely defer to that uh, decision. But I, I appreciate the thought. It's it's important to uh, you know to plan ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much, Robin. Thank you, uh, Jay. Um, I'm looking around here, Mr. Fiato. Anything? We good? I'm just checking. You, 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 you. No, I'm good. Um, I just want to thank. I want to thank Jim and Ron for being so responsive. Anytime that we have an issue, there's a call, concern, 
they're right on it, Re really 24 hours a day. I couldn't be more pleased with the response we're getting from them. Thank you. Well, to Mr. Fiato and the, the team, we have a scan screen, the whole team, thank you very much. We've heard a couple of things where um, issues have come up and uh, you folks are already taking care of them. Uh, going around the room one more time, I don't see any other hands going up. Any other questions, final shot here? Any other questions, any other thoughts, any other concerns? Questions, thoughts, concerns? Okay, not seeing any questions, thoughts, or concerns. Uh, I'd, uh, accept a motion to adjourn. Motion to Kennedy. Second. Uh, Mr. Samaras, Mr. Kennedy. I want to thank everybody for being here today. I think this uh, was very fruitful, and I hope everybody has a uh, happy holiday season, Merry Christmas, and all that good stuff. So thank you, folks. Happy holidays to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Happy you. holidays. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.